Hello everyone, this is Michael Gass with PDS Equipment. Today we're going to talk about how to make a feathered or a gradiated white plate in RasterLink. Uh, as you know, the valid pixel function in RasterLink is 100% white or no white. There is no in between. There is no gradient. That's its function in RasterLink. It's designed to put white behind your image so that your color holds correctly and it doesn't look at the color information as far as what percentage. It just looks at it to see if there's color information there puts 100% white behind it. So you can't do gradiated white plates using the valid pixel function. However, you can make gradiated white plates or feathered white plates, whatever you're going to call it. Here's how we do it. So the first thing we're going to do is open up a file. This is Cherokee Falls in North Georgia. It's about a 90 foot waterfall. It's at Cloudland Canyon State Park, walking distance from my house, one of my favorite places to visit. And yes, I am biased. And there's our commercial for the day. So the first thing we're going to do is click on our... Uh, rectangle tool change it to the ellipse tool gonna drag up at the top drag down to the bottom create an ellipse then we're gonna go over here to our layers tab if your layers tab is not open you would hit window go down to the layer and click the layer drop down and your layer tab would be open so we're gonna click on our layer we're gonna click the plus key twice I'm gonna take layer one and we're gonna call that color Going to click on layer two and we're going to call that white plate. I'm going to click on layer three and call that bounding box. All right, so now we have three layers. I'm going to go back and select only our color layer. We're going to select our rectangle, or excuse me, our ellipse that we drew. And uh, we're going to select no fill. Then we're going to click on the rectangle and I'm going to hit Control C for copy. Then we're going to go over to our white plate, turn it on, turn that one off. I'm going to go to Edit, Paste in Place. Now that won't work, so what do I do here? Edit, Paste in Place. There we go. So now we have the same rectangle, or excuse me, the same ellipse, the same oval on two different files. We're going to go back to our artwork and we're going to select everything. Just drag across and select. We're going to go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Now we've clipped down our original file. Now we're going to go to Effect, Stylize, Feather. Going to be 0.3 inches. We're going to click OK. Yeah, that's that's a good feather. That's a lot, but I like it. It works for this. Makes a nice, soft, interesting image. So now we're going to come over here to our white plate. We're going to click on that, and we're going to click on our fill. We're going to double click and make our fill 100% cyan, zero everything else. this is going to eventually be our white plate so the next thing we're going to do is um, feather the white plate but I want to make sure my white doesn't feather out stronger than my color because if that happens you get a white halo around your image so I'm going to take this image and I'm going to transform it I'm going to go object I'm going to, I'm going to select this I'm going to go object transform and I'm going to scale it and I'm going to cut it back uniform 95%. So I'm going to cut it back 5%. Just made that a little bit smaller. Now I'm going to come over here to my stroke and put no stroke. Then I'm going to go effect, stylize, feather. I did 0.3 a minute ago. I want to make this a little bit stronger. So I'm going to make it 0.4. Because I want my white to feather out faster than my color where I don't get a white halo around my object. So now I have two layers. A layer of color and a layer of white. Now I'm going to click on my bounding box. And I'm going to simply go back to my shape. Right click. Make it a rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a rectangle from top to bottom. 
going to make that a no stroke, no fill. Why are we doing that? When I uh, made my shape smaller for the white plate, uh, when you save the PDF, sometimes it will truncate down to the smallest art, and my two images would not be the same size, and they wouldn't register up correctly in raster length. So I always draw a bounding box on its own layer, a no stroke, no fill box, and I keep it open whenever I select my layer. So now I'm going to select my color. I'm going to select my bounding box. I'm going to go File. I'm going to click Save As. I'm just going to save this on the desktop. And we're going to call this, uh, I'm going to save it as a PDF. And we're going to call this uh, Cherokee Falls Color. Evidently, I've saved this before. All right. So now I'm going to click off my color. Click on this. I'm going to go over here to File, Document Color Mode. I want to be in CMYK, so I'm going to click CMYK. So again, that was File, Document Color Mode, CMYK. To save this, it has to be CMYK. I did not necessarily want to save my original artwork as CMYK because I want to keep it in whatever native form it was in, which was RGB. Sometimes you shift a image from RGB to CMYK, you can't get a little color shift. So we're only worried about our white plate layer being RGB, or excuse me, being color, not RGB. So now we're going to highlight our bounding box, highlight our white plate, not highlight our color plate. We're going to hit File, Save As, Cherokee Falls, White. Click Save. And again, I've done this before, so we're going to save that. All right, now we're going to bounce over to Raster Link. We're going to hit, uh, I'm on a 6042 Mark II. It, uh, anything that you have, whatever you have, it's going to work and be the same. So we're going to hit File, Open. I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to go to uh, Cherokee Falls Color, Cherokee Falls White. I'm going to click both of them. Click Open. Both can come in here. Scroll down to the bottom. And that's why I've done it before. So it would just save confusion. I'm just going to delete that quickly so that you don't get confused by looking at two different things All right. so now I'm going to uh, first thing I want to do real quick is I'm going to go to general print and I'm going to look at this three inches by four inches I did shrink it down just just to make it a little quicker click on this three inches by four inches so they are both the same size I always look at that and make sure 3.078, 4.356. They're both exactly the same size. That's important. If both of these files were not the same size right here, they wouldn't register up in raster link and it wouldn't look right. So now we're going to take our white plate. How are we going to make it gradiated? We're going to click on the very top tab, which is properties. On our white plate file, we're going to go from full color to mono color, and when we click on that, this window pops up. Ours is cyan, and so the reason we picked 100% cyan is so that we could take those cyan pixels and pixel by pixel replace with white. That, that's very important. You want to make sure your file is CMYK based and 100% cyan. Just so, just to clarify, it could be 100% of any color. I just like using cyan. Visually, it works for me. You can use whichever primary color you want. Then we're going to click OK and watch this guy change to white. And if we look at it here, I'm going to zoom in. It's a little hard to see. But you can see that our white plate is feathered. So now we take both of these files and we go to our composition with the white on top, color on top. Obviously, if you were second surface printing, you would put the white on white on top, color on bottom, but in this case we want white on bottom, color on top, click composite, click yes, and they are both linked together, and when we print that in raster length, we're going to get a feathered white plate, and that is all there is to it, I hope that helps out, if you have any questions, you can always uh, email me, text me, that is no problem, and again, this is Michael Gass with PDS Equipment, thank you very much, be sure to check out our YouTube and our PDS website, all our training videos that we have for you guys. Thank you very much.